This section is called inspiration. So this is kind of best practice. This is the bit of what good looks like. And our first pair are BT and AMV BBDO. BT is obviously one of the biggest advertising clients in the country. AMV BBDO was first appointed to BT Retail in February 1994. That's 19 years ago. Take them and Volkswagen out, and that average of three and a half years probably drops to about six months. Um, so first appointed February 1994 uh, with that famous It's Good to Talk uh, campaign featuring Bob Hoskins. Uh, and, what, and we have with us Gavin Patterson of BT uh, and Silla Snowball from uh, AMV. Uh, before I ask them to come up, let's just have a little taste of uh, some of the work that they have done with a little, a recent example of their work. If you love great sports, then come with me. It's showtime. Prepare to be amazed. Very amazed. Come on. Time for the big guns. The big fellas. the big names. Hello. Good guest. Thank you. And we're live in three, two, one. With top pick Barclays Premier League matches. And all the live Aviva Premiership Rugby. Exclusive to our new TV channels and free with BT Broadband. Well, Gavin um, is Chief Executive of BT. Thank you very much indeed for coming in, Gavin. And you're slightly special because you really rose up through marketing, didn't you? You were... My Not mother a thinks I'm special. Guy or a technology guy, you're one of the team here, really. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it is unusual, but yeah. uh, I'm sure there are many more people who've got potential to do it. In that little ultimatum game, how did what was the outcome in your partnership? I don't think we want to say actually. No, no, no. no. I think we we're didn't here get to, to an talk agreement. about a function. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. That, that's very interesting. Um, <laughs> Let's Silla, move on. <laughs> um, do your eyes ever stray away from Silla, Gavin, or? <gasps> Be careful on this one. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, no, we've had a fantastic relationship. Uh, the relationship started before I joined BT. Uh, we're almost coming up to 20 years. Uh, but for the last 10 years, uh, where I've been there, I think we've only had one difficult moment. Yeah. But what was the difficult moment? Um, the one I have in mind. <laughs> Actually, we should have one of you outside the room, obviously. Yeah, it's like Mr. and Mrs. The other one in, you know. It's, it's it's I think my recollection of the difficult moment was you tried to uh, ditch us, but uh, maybe you yeah, see it a different way. I mean, way. I think... You would bring the mic a little closer, Philip. <laughs> <Cilla. laughs> Don't shy away. That wouldn't be the difficult moment I would remember. I mean, I think conflict's been a difficult moment where marrying up a big account like BT with other clients who touch it was a sensitive moment. Um, but no, that was dealt with quickly, and I think because of the strong partnership. But the, the bad moment I remember was quite recently when we were delivering that film, and it was a very important launch on May the 9th, and we failed to deliver the film on time for the rehearsal, and there was a slight meltdown at that moment, but uh, it was all resolved quite quickly. But that, was, so that was your fault, basically. That was our, it's always our fault. <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, I, d I think in a 10-year relationship that we've had and a 19-year re relationship in the agency with BT, a couple of obstacles is pretty good going. I mean, Gavin, BT, we've heard a little bit about procurement in this, this word that I know people in this room probably don't like because it implies this kind of professionalisation, commercialisation of mm. supplier relationships. And it, 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 it has a sort of connotation of screwing them into the ground. But you must have lots of suppliers at BT, from stationery to technology contracts, everything. Do you have a sort of procurement, you must have a procurement team. Have you included the marketing, the, the, the agencies in that? Absolutely. Um, there's no reason why uh, you can't have a, a strong procurement process. I think the key for me is to make sure that it is not dominated by the head of procurement. You know, at the end of the day, you know, the marketing people, the marketing director, 
even the, C, the CEO needs to be part of that process and make sure that the factors that are being used to make the decision uh, are properly weighted and that price alone is not necessarily the, the right, right factor. Because there's, there's a tendency in the procurement process for procurement people whose job is to do these kinds of things to look at things they can measure and measure quite exactly. Price is obviously the most, on, the most straightforward. And then they'll focus on those. And there may be lots of unmeasurable, intangible things that they're missing. And that, that is a fault, isn't it? That would just yeah, it, it, it is a risk. Uh, but ultimately, if, if the relationship with your agency, the partnership with your agency is delivering value, and you can see that in the business results, it's a much easier conversation. Mm. So how, how beneficial is it to have a client who you know and have had for you know, a few years, you probably know the, the in-house team? I mean... Does that actually affect creativity? Yes, it does. And I think long-term relationships are a commercial imperative. It's not just a nice-to-have. Long-term relationships can drive the success of an agency. If you put in account the size and scale and complexity of BT in the centre of an agency like ours, it has a dynamic effect on the rest of the relationships we have in the agency, how fast we deliver how quickly we understand new technology. So a good relationship has a great ripple effect on other relationships um, and does set all, ultimately the fortunes of an agency. If you're an agency that is being dumped every three years, you're doing something wrong. Right. So the challenge is to beat that norm and with churn and that three-year horrifying statistic, you have to have relationships at all levels, all the time, because new clients are coming in, new relationships have to be formed really quickly if marketing directors are leaving after 18 months. Yeah. But, but relationships drive our commercial effectiveness in the agency. And, and I suppose both of you would suggest that personal relationships are part of that, are they? I mean, it is interesting that the relationship between the companies has kind of weathered changes of personnel, so it's clearly bigger than any individual, but personal relationships are quite helpful, aren't they? Just knowing what the other person does and what they're like and how they work, is that important? I, I think it's absolutely critical. Um, what AMV have done over the years is ensured that they've always had a relationship with uh, every level of management at BT. Uh, so that if we've come across a problem, uh, a bump in the road, they've been able to talk to other people without necessarily undermining the, the marketing director. And it's that ability to escalate issues, not allowing problems to, to really become rooted, uh, intercepting things at an early stage that allow you to build partnerships over the long term, I think. So this point we've been hearing has already been mentioned a couple of times about constantly reviewing what you're doing is that something you do yeah and we measure the relationship yeah. regularly at all levels do you? i mean a, a strong client agency relationship has to be bigger than the, the relationship with between the two people mm. at the top it has to be at every level because it can come unstuck at any level so we measure that constantly we check the quality of it and we fix it if something's going wrong mm. but very rarely are the people issues that we can't deal with quickly mm. because we're measuring it all the time. And we actually have a relationship. We love working on the BT business. We love the people. We love the culture. We love the product. Mm. And if you love something, you don't, you don't want to dump it. Mm. So your, in, your HS1 and HS2 analogy is really helpful because if, if it's just a contract, you don't have a relationship. It's got to be a relationship and a really deep one to be sustainable. And how do you stop her becoming complacent and taking you for granted, Gavin? That's a good question, Evan, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, for us, I think, uh, you know, main sure, making sure that there's a challenging yeah. mentality uh, in the relationship. If there are people issues, um, there's, you know, we will go in and talk about them. One of the things I find, I think, with relationships, uh, with, with agencies is if you if you take a long-term perspective um, you can attract talent to work on the business because you can give some stability to 
uh, to the relationship with the agency itself and, and, and the, um, uh, ensure that the agency thrives over the long term. And that's a much more, I think, uh, progressive way. Making uh, sure the agency thrives. Well, this is it. Every time... That is, that is the quote of the, of, of, of yeah. the day, really. You're the client and you want the agency to Absolutely. thrive. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and if you're changing and destabilizing no, the agency it. every few months uh, or every few years, it's... it's creating all sorts of problems for the agency itself. Mm. It undermines their reputation. So it's a decision that needs to be taken very, very carefully. Mm. That's been fascinating. We've got two more couples, so I'm going to leave it there. Just how, how's BT Sport going, by the way? Is it? Uh... Well, very well, thank you very much. <laughs> right. We're, Gavin, in a, we're in a closed period, so right, watch this space. Gavin Patterson, Phyllis Noble, thank, thank you both you. very much. Mm.